Glad you're in our room tonight. Thanks for dealing with the multiple events and changeover chaos. It's rock and roll in New York City, that's for sure. Folks, it is our great pleasure to welcome back to our stage Grammy Award winning singer songwriter Mike Farris. second home and uh, I went and had four square slices today right off the bat <laughs> and I want to go take a nap <laughs> hey man so I'm going to start off doing the song I, I think I want to do this this is um, uh, just a few weeks ago I was down in uh, Macon Georgia and I um, I was asked to do this thing at Capricorn Studios and for those of you who remember my old band, The Wheelies. Yeah, remember those guys? We, uh, we were on Capricorn Records when we left Atlanta. And, um, and uh, we really, I was really, really, really proud of that. And then, so we came, I went down to Macon and, um, and went to the studio. And the studio Amongst all my friends, audibly, uh, Dan, all my all my southern rocker buddies, we for all these years we thought that make uh, that Capricorn was uh, the studio was uh, in disrepair. It, it was it was no longer usable. It hadn't been usable in decades, and for some reason that was the 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 conventional wisdom going around and. Uh, and so I went down there, walked in, and I'm happy to report, man, I walked into the control room, and the control room, I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful, man. Y'all did a great job renovate, re redoing this. And he goes, oh no, this is absolutely original. I was like, you're kidding me. It was exquisitely beautiful. Exquisitely beautiful. Modern design, but it was but it was designed in 1972. Absolutely beautiful. So I started to get chills. I said, so they had like this curtain behind in, in all the studios. There's like a there'll be a sofa in the back behind the behind the control board where people sit and listen to mixes or whatever. And behind this one, and a lot of times it's not not unusual to have a big sound dampening curtain. You know, sometimes, most of the time, it's a very nondescript curtain, but this one was a very, very uh, early 70s print on it. 
absolutely gorgeous, big, heavy curtain. And he goes, as a matter of fact, I said, that's got to be new. He goes, no, that's the same curtain that was here in 1972. So this studio was, was founded by Phil Walden's brother, Alan, who managed Otis Redding. And that's who built the studio was Otis Redding and Alan Warren. And so in 72, they, they turned into Capricorn Studios. So the guy goes, well, let's go to the, the, uh, the recording floor. So we walk into the room where all this great music was, had been performed. And you walk in, and I immediately started tearing up. And I said, what's original here? And he said, every inch of paint on the walls is exactly as it was in 1972. You mean to tell me this room is exactly as it was when the Almond Brothers recorded Brothers and Sisters? Yes. You mean to tell me this room is exactly as it was when Marshall Tucker Band recorded Fire on the Mountain? Yes, it is. So that is so, so rare to have a, a, a studio like that that's in mint condition, exactly like a time capsule. And, um, and you, could just, you could just hear the, all these songs being played, man. Laid Back, Greg Allman's classic solo record, Laid Back, was recorded there, Midnight Rock. So this has been kind of like sticking with me for, for, for weeks now. It's almost kind of, it's almost been haunting me. So, it's probably good that I tune up before I get up here. And um, it is just, it's just, uh, I want to maybe try to play y'all a song in celebration of that. But y'all got to quiet down a little bit. So <laughs> y'all got to calm Y'all got to calm the hell down. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling this city New York Weedy. Man, it just smells like weed everywhere now, don't it? It almost did back then, but only in, on certain street corners, you know. But now it's just all over every corner. All right, let me see if I can sing this song.
been a little bit of jet lag, y'all better help me sing these songs. I hope y'all know all the lyrics. Got a call from the boys from school. Sit there wondering what they can do. No wonder in the van when they can meet you. September chills in the air And everybody acts like they just don't care Oh, I really wish you would come and talk to them Yeah, here they're building a new tire plant In the middle of the woods next to the Coca-Cola stand
the seat sucks. <laughs> hey Gerard, can you turn down just 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 a little bit of the high end on this acoustic? These guitar strings suck as well. All right, I'm gonna play some stuff that um, I should know pretty well since we've been playing quite a bit with the wheelies. Um, <laughs> Was anybody at the Ride the Tide Festival? Yeah. Is that amazing or what? Yeah. Man, who was it there? Just, just leave now. No, it was great. It was a great time, and um, and. Um, the next shows we're doing will be in Spain. So if you want to come over to Spain and hang out. Spaniards are great, great, great rock and roll fans. We may, uh, may even do this one.
Sarasota rehearsing for a, uh, for a tour and so I go I fly down to Sarasota and um, one evening and I, I get up the next morning and I go to pick up Warren at the hotel he was staying at staying at a motel <laughs> <laughs> what the hell you living in a motel bro and uh, and so I go get him I knock on his door man he's still in bed and I wake him up and he goes over and he fires up a, a, a roach he's got, he's found. And, and he's like, are you hungry? And I was like, no, I wanna go write this fucking song. And he goes, let's go eat. <laughs> he's gonna have breakfast. So his, his idea of breakfast was going to Kenny Rogers Roasters and eating a chicken. <laughs> so he went and he ate some chicken and some baked beans for breakfast. And then we rode around. I, I had rented this uh, this Mustang GT convertible, and um, and we rode around, dropped the top on it, and listened to the demos of the new uh, with the forthcoming. It was it was probably six months of being released at that point. The first uh, the first Governor Mule record, and so we rode around, listened to that, and then went over to hang out with the brothers and and uh, while they rehearsed. And then uh, went back to uh, his motel room <laughs> and put a beat verse on, on Good Time. And then, uh, and then uh, a great memory uh, was while we were recording it, I stayed here in, in uh, New York and, and Woodstock. And uh, we were um, mixing it and doing some overdub stuff or whatever. But the main, one of the main things when we were in Woodstock uh, this this particular week, and we, we were going to get Warren to do the solo on Gypsy Lullaby and and Good Time, and so but we couldn't get our schedule, so we had to go and jump on a plane and go to Chicago and catch them uh, on a day off in Chicago with all brothers, and so uh, it was really cool cool evening. Warren came over and, and did the solo for for Good Time and uh, and Gypsy. And, and then Woody and Greg and a whole slew of other crazy hillbillies came showing up and, uh, 
and we we had a great time that night. And uh, and so, um, but I've got a, one of my favorite memories and photos um, is with Greg and Warren and Woody and me and uh, Michael Michael Barbiero um, in the studio that night in Chicago. It's really it's really special. But that's a, he laid down two great solos on Dixie Lullaby in a good time for sure. And, so, yeah. Does, it, does this guitar sound okay, y'all? Yeah. 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 This guitar is, uh, it never leaves home. I brought it here this week. It's the first time this thing's been on the road since probably 2007. Uh, Gibson gives me these J45s to travel with. This one was gifted to me by Rose for my birthday. This, um, this guitar actually came from Chicago originally, and she had surprised me with it. Uh, the year, the year, the year, just a few months before she passed away. And um, so it normally doesn't leave home. And, um, but the guitar, the main travel guitar that I have that, uh, that Gibson gave me to travel with, I ran over the other day in the driveway, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it, it did, it, I, I ran over the neck, so so they just gotta replace the neck and then it'll be back up and right. But for now, I can't check this one, so I gotta lug it around at work. This is an old uh, Willie Dixon song that I re reworked for Julie, my beautiful wife, of 29 years this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We met right here in New York City. We showed in. And the night we met, she came in, she walked to the door of this place, I think it was called T Rex. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in a long, at a long table with people from like, we've been doing press all week. With like, this is back when magazines, rock and roll magazines meant something. So you would come up here and do like, you'd do interviews with all these rock magazines and you would do interviews with like, uh, uh, remember all the rock radio shows that would, that would come on at nighttime and they'd interview rock bands and shit. You would sit there in your room and just nerd out listening to your favorite rock. Do you remember this? Yeah. Yeah. I forget the name of all these rock shows. Rockline. Yeah. Rockline was one of the big ones. We we came here and did did all, did all that shit for a whole week, and I was so burnt out, I was so ready to get over this, and so I called Holly Sislow, who was Andy Kipnis, one of our managers, his assistant, and said, "Okay, you're coming over. I want you to come over here at eight o'clock and rescue me from this place." And so she did, but she brought her roommate, which was Julie, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting, looking right at the door, and when she walks to the door, I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's me, right there. I want that for the rest of my, and, and, that, and we went out, we went out in the city, man, and had a great time, we partied, and Rick got so drunk that we had to put him on one of those, uh, those, uh, uh, um, suit, those, those luggage things that you take, you, we will. We I've drug drug him off six foot four of him. Drug him on. Put him on one of those things. Put him in an elevator. Hit his room. His floor button. And just that was the last I saw. Him. I was like, I'll see you tomorrow, bro. I'm going to hang out with my my new wife. And and yeah, it was great because I was like, so what do you what, what do we do? What do we do on a Tuesday night in New York? You know, she was like, well, that's Paul's plan. And I went, oh my God. She not only knows 
that who Les Paul is, but she knows that he's playing tonight and knows where he's playing. That, that's that's too cool, right? He's dead at Fat Tuesdays back then. Yeah, and so we went, got really really fucked up, and and got kicked out. And for and but anyway, we had a great time, and and here we are, almost thirty years later. And, um, so I wrote this song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this is old Willie Dixon song I was working on around the house one day out in the yard, and um, and uh, and played for a bunch of people who was really high one day, and they started bobbing their heads right, and I was like, uh oh, this has got to go on the record. It was like this. Everybody high right now? Everybody's high. You can't walk down the street from New York without getting high now. That's fun, ain't it? That's all you need to have fun right now. I want you to help me sing this, all right? Y'all know what to do? Anybody need instructions? Bring him some more pineapple juice. The little boy in the front. That's why I'm here. Thank you. 
See, I know, I know who that is now. With that whistle, see? Y'all don't know him? Man, that's Tobacco Road all day long out there. Y'all heard a new song, Let the Child Ride? Yeah! Yeah, yeah! Mm -hmm. That's one that uh, I had for a whole long time. And, uh, and man, I showed that to the guys, man. They were like, let's do that right now. And we we recorded that thing, like, in no time. You want to hear it? Yeah! This is, I played this in Sweden one time. When I was just for a sound check, and I was like, I have got to record this thing. It's been sitting around, just wait for this moment. So, it's uh, this is the way it was written.
So when we were in the studio room, we I was, um, it was really, it's, it's real hectic when you're trying, when you're under the gun, you've got a timeline, you're trying to work something out, and you got all this creative, it's like a whirlwind going on. And I had this idea for the ending, which is boom ba da ba 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 I was in the vocal booth doing this, and I fucking played that. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, but this is what you gotta end it. You gotta end it like this. And everybody was agreed. They were like, yeah, that's really cool. And I was like, but I don't. And so we went back, went went away from it, and came back to the idea. And I was like, oh my god, what did we do? And nobody could remember. <laughs> You talking about sheer panic when you have a great idea and you come and you've forgotten it. So, not only had we forgotten it, but when I when I came back, I finally realized what it was. Then I couldn't play it, which is really crazy because when I played the first time, I was like, I'm playing above, like it's like an outer body experience, man. I'm sitting there shredding. I don't know. I can't play guitar, man. <laughs> I'm sitting there going. What the? F how, did I, how am I doing this? And and it was crazy. And I had I can't I haven't done it since. But I don't have to because those guys can play it. So it's fine. Now you just need ten more. Yeah. Ooh, if 
sound great. These guitar strings sound awesome. These guitar strings are trying to hold me back, man. What's that? That's what I get for running over my guitars. That you How'd I run over it? This is how I ran over the guitar. I was going to rehearsal with the Wheelies in Nashville. For my life. And, um, and I jumped in the car, the car was backed in the garage, and I, I, and I was loading it into another car from one of my other cars. I, and, I, and so I put the guitar case in front, of the, in front of this car and was in the back of the car putting all the shit in and was late and jumped in the car and then went back to the front of the car and I had to turn right out of the garage and I, when I turned it went boom, boom, and I'm like, oh my God. And you get really sick 
Has anybody run over a kid? Everybody ever run over a kid? It's worse than that. <laughs> Way worse than run over a kid. It made the same, it had the same feel to it too, you know. The car was fine, though. Thank, thank God Christian's an adult. What's that? I said, thank God Christian's an adult now. <laughs> thank God. He's, yeah, he's, he's, there's two adults in the house and then there's me. <laughs>
What's up, everyone? That's what they call back home in the church, the Amen Corner.
I've been so good, I've got a little treat for you. Got some goodies. Let me see what Kia wanted in this one.
Your mama don't want you. Yeah. Your daddy don't need you. Well, your mama don't want you. Oh, your daddy don't need you. I'm going to give you everything. Everything your heart is ever had. Somebody say, your mama don't want you. Your daddy don't need it. Your mama don't want you. Your daddy don't want you. Your poor daddy don't need you. I'm gonna give you everything, everything your heart ever had. Ever yeah, She moved to the country, moved uh, to Woodstock, got a place in Woodstock, and actually painted her mailbox. And, uh, so this is a song dedicated to Rose.
This is the only time I'm gonna say it tonight that I'm gonna ask very kindly for everybody to shut the fuck up. I'm looking over to Adrian Corner right now when I say that. Good shirt, thank you. Thank you. Got a bird on the whistle. Baby got a bird. Honey got a bird to sing. Baby got a bird. Honey got a bird to sing. Without my Corina, show sure don't mean, show sure don't mean a natural thing.
was before the pandemic. Yeah. February 10th? Yeah. And just before. And, you know, we had Buzzy here. Buzzy was here with his three kids. Sure was. And that's the last time we all saw Buzzy, most of us, I guess. And, uh, but man, I'm really thankful that we're all here and we can still enjoy our friendship, being with each other, and sharing that music, man. It means so much. Cheers. The short girl who stood up and had to and raise her hand real high. Thank you. Should have that. stood up. <laughs> Hold them to stand up. Let's do that. So first song I ever wrote. Company by, mm. company 
Silver and Stone is the last song I wrote for it, and um, it's one of those songs that kind of the ones that somehow seem to be very personal, kind of like just for you. And if anybody else gets it and enjoys it, that's just you know cherry on the top. But it's really it doesn't even matter what sometimes when you some songs they just come out in about five minutes and they're done. And this one was like that. And I had been thinking about our son, Christian Blue Sky, was on my mind a lot. And, uh, and, you know, from the time he was probably 14, 12, I mean, I used to bring him down here all the time when he was a child when we lived in Woodstock. And I'd bring him down, I'd go sneak him out of, Julie wouldn't know this, and I would go to school, and I'd get him out of school when he was in the first, second grade. And I'd, We'd go jump on a train and come down here to the city, and and I would just show him. And we'd just go whatever, eat some Indian food and hang out, whatever. Go to museums, whatever. And the purpose of that was was that I, it wasn't a, it wasn't a conscious effort for me, but it was um, what I was doing was I was I had determined that I was going to give my child a better and greater vision 
of this world and the possibilities of this world than I've ever had. And, and I'm sure a lot of us are like that, right? And so, so I would bring him down here, and um, and just to be here, you know, was was a big deal for me, you know, when considering where I came from, you know, from coming up from nothing, and so. And the ultimate dream for me always was from the day he we found out he was coming to the world was I wanted to give him a much better, greater life than I ever had, had dreamed of. And so fast forward to over the past, since 2007, when my second career began, we would be up here in New York just hanging out or whatever, and he became a teenager. And so he would be with me on these little trips and he would walk my feet off to about three in the morning around the city and with this unending amount of energy and he would just be talking about all these dreams he had and all these things that he wanted to accomplish and all these things. But he, the big question for him was, Dad, how, where am I supposed to be? You know, how am I supposed, what, I don't know what I'm here for, right? Is what, basically what he was saying. And I remember standing just a couple of blocks underneath the Empire State Building one night about three in the morning eating papaya king. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's a shitty papaya king right, right across the street from the Empire State Building. And I remember him saying, you know, like, this is, this is, I, I need to know, how, you know, and I'm like, well, that's the one thing that only you can find that out. I, nobody's going to have the answer for you. You're going to have to figure that out. And that's and that's a really a beautiful thing, you know. It's frustrating though for kids because kids are like, I want just tell me, and I'm like, I can't because I don't know. And so I, I specifically remember that. And then so he's getting ready to graduate around this time, 2015, and and um, and. Um, and this song, it had been on my heart for a while. And so this song popped up. And so this is for, uh, this is for my beautiful, beautiful child. This is one of those songs too that I totally forget the lyrics to. <laughs> I need to carry a teleprompter. Go. 
song that's not complete it's it's not even done yet but I'm gonna do it anyway so there's gonna be an abrupt ending to this thing and and we'll see I think it may be done it may be finished I don't know. Let me see. we'll see how it goes I'm sorry. 
I think this is going to be the best record I've probably ever done. It's, um, my problem is dealing with idiots. <laughs> AKA record labels. I think I'm going to put this song on the record. If you don't mind, I want to end this with the Tom Petty song. Is that all right? She said, I'm never going. 